Good evening, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome in as we present this week's edition of the Milford Informer. I am your host, Tim Coet. We've taken the show on the road this week. We're outside of our Milford TV studios, and we've come down here to Fino Field in Milford, which has been the host site of this year's 2017 Massachusetts Legion Baseball State Tournament. What an exciting week of baseball we have seen here on this Fino Field this week. Months and even years of planning going into hosting the tournament here in Milford this year, and a great job done by all of the members of the Board of Directors for Post 59, a ton of volunteers down here throughout the week. We've seen the Board of Selectmen here pitching in. We've seen Representative Brian Murray pitching in this week. So it's been a real community feel down here at Fino for this tournament to get underway. And we've seen an exciting run for Milford Post 59 as well. They served as the host team in this tournament, one of the eight teams, the elite eight from around the state for Legion Baseball participating in this tournament. So we've seen tremendous games throughout the week. And what we want to do is devote all of our time here on the Milford Informer this week to bring you through each game for Milford Post 59 and we'll start at the beginning. We'll take you back to day one of the tournament which took place last Saturday where Milford took on Newton Post 440. We're, we're very excited obviously. Um, this has definitely been a couple years of the making, a couple golf tournaments that we had raised some money, make sure that the field was done, uh, working with the park commissioners. Um, you know, Tim, you had <laughs> Tim knows all the frustrations that go into this because him and I talk about it on a nightly basis. Um, but it, it, it's, it's a lot of fun. It really is. It's been a lot of hard work by a lot of people, um, so many volunteers. And you can see it at the sea of gold that are here with a lot of the volunteers. Uh, we're very fortunate that um, a lot of people take their time out here in these five days to, to come down and make this, uh, you know, such a special place, a special environment. Um, so far, so good here. Great game to start 3-2 in the bottom of the sixth. Two great teams in Braintree and Shrewsbury. Um, obviously, we've seen Shrewsbury during the year. They're a great team and Braintree had a great run as well. So. Uh, we're just excited to, to host the tournament, put on a good show. And, you know, I actually said to the paper last night, um, we're here to put on a good show. But as far as the team goes, you know, we're, we're here to win. We're not just here to, to entertain everyone and, and go home. So, um, you know, but so far, so good. Everything's great. Field's in great shape. Uh, a lot of cooperation. Chris Morcone joins us on the program here this morning. And Chris, first and foremost, thank you so much. And how much are you enjoying this state tournament so far? Well, first, let me say hello to Tim and welcome back, Matt. Yeah, thank you. <laughs> yeah, no. The tournament is great. We uh, have the best teams in the state, and uh, Lee, uh, Milford is uh, is doing their best, and we have plenty of volunteers, so we're enjoying this immensely. My father was the first captain and, and uh, on the very first Legion team in 1929. <laughs> he, I was then, the, the, he, he became coach in 1949 to 69. I was the mascot, then I was the bad boy, then I played in 63, 64. And now I'm the president, which should be one year term, 1994. And I'm still the president <laughs> since then. So one term turned into a long time. Yeah, you're, like, you're like FDR. You just, they, have to, they have to come up with a new term limit rule after you yeah. go. No, we have a good group of volunteers. Um, and we have a great group of uh, board of directors. The last two years, we put on six new people, and they work hard. They do the 50-50, they do the stand, and the announcing, unbelievable. Oh, yeah. and, and, and Chris, obviously, getting to this day here today has been a, a long process for, for this group around here. You, you put in the bid back last fall. It was accepted over the winter, and it's really been about the last six or seven months, a race to the finish line here, getting everything ready. Uh, what has this process been like for you guys being prepared to get ready to host these five days? Yeah. Well, believe it or not, Tim, we talked about this two and a half years ago. And then the park said to us, if you could wait, because we're, we're going to bid our contract out to do over Fino Field. And they did. They did it New Infield. Matter of fact, they came down here. And now my heart skipped a beat because the machines and the bulldozers <laughs> scraped out of the outfield, all the infield, oh. and all behind on plate. But now you can see it. It's flat. It's got infield mix. It's got grass. Um, it's called sod. And around the, from first to third, you have a warning track, so the catcher, first base and third base can, can know where that is. Right. As a board of directors and as the president, we're overjoyed with that news. And so when we said that was going to come to fruition, we said, let's put the bid in, and we did, and it's the best thing ever because it's a lot of fun here. After years of planning and organizing, the Massachusetts Legion State Tournament returned to Fino Field this week. 
as the host team Milford Post 59 would have a chance to enjoy the primetime game on the schedule, complete with plenty of pregame fanfare. Once the festivities came to a close, it was time to focus on the task at hand as Milford would square off against the District 5 champion Newton Post 440. Milford would take the first lead of this tournament in the bottom of the second thanks to an error by the Newton third baseman. Meanwhile, after pitching two scoreless frames to open the game, Michael Farrell was well on his way to a shutdown third, collecting a strikeout and a groundout. But Newton would rally from there, putting two runners on ahead of Jackson Marsjanic, who would single to drive in the game's tying run. From there, it was Milford's infield defensive woes that would come to the surface. After an error by Joe Sanchione kept the inning alive, Brendan Mignoni would send a pop-up out on the shallow left field grass. Tyler Monahan was there but could not make the catch, and two runs would score to give Newton a 3-1 lead. Milford's offense would bounce back over the next several innings. Joe Sanchione would contribute with an RBI single in the third. Post-59 would then enjoy a three-run fifth inning, highlighted by this two-run single from Zach Sisitsky. Tyler Monahan would drive in a run in the bottom of the sixth, and it looked like Milford had seized control of the game with a 6-3 lead. But shaky defense would be Milford's undoing as they took the field for the top of the seventh. They would commit three more errors in a frame that saw Newton send 13 batters to the plate, scoring eight times to jump on top 11-6. Despite having runners on base in every single inning, Milford could not maximize their scoring chances over the late frames, and they would fall on this opening day of tournament play, losing to Newton by a final score of 11-8. Milford had just over 12 hours to turn the page from that difficult loss to Newton. The team returned to Fino on Sunday afternoon for a 12:30 matchup with District 9 champion Somerset Post 228. Somerset would win the pregame coin toss, so Post 59 would serve as the visitors in their home ballpark in a win or go home showdown. As Milford came to the plate in the top of the first, they would enjoy some early success against Post 228 starter Aaron Mello. After Joe Sanchione was hit by a pitch to open the game, Sean Ravello would jump on the first pitch of his at-bat, lining it to right to place two on with one out for Aiden Wild. Wild would also swing at the first pitch, sending a grounder back up the middle that would sneak through for a hit, allowing Sanchione to score to give Milford a quick lead. Post 59 would add two more runs in the frame on a sack fly from Zach Zasitsky and a bases loaded hit by pitch to Michael Farrell to give themselves a 3-0 lead after just a half an inning of play. That seemed like it could easily be enough for a win with the talented lefty Jonathan Rice on the mound, who had allowed just four hits and an unearned run in his last two starts. But Rice would be greeted rudely as Somerset's Mike Shea would lead off the bottom of the first with a single. Then after a four-pitch walk to Jeremy Thibitot and a passed ball that advanced the runners, the DH Luke Faria would come through with a base hit to drive in two, quickly cutting the Milford lead to a single run. Rice would battle back to strike out the next hitter, but immediately after the K was recorded, Coach DeVito would come out of the dugout sensing trouble with his starter. After a brief conversation, Rice would be lifted from the game for injury reasons, leaving the Milford bullpen to piece together the next eight and two-thirds innings. First up was the first-year left-hander Alex Gunfriday. Alex would induce a ground ball to pick up the second out of the inning before getting a strikeout of Jose Martinez to end the frame keeping the Milford lead intact. With the state of the pitching staff uncertain for the remainder of the game, the offense knew they had to step up, and that is exactly what happened in the second inning. With two on and one out, Milford's cleanup hitter Tyler Monahan would drive a ball deep out to right. It would go as an RBI double to give Milford a 4-2 lead. That hit was just the start of an extended post-59 offensive rally. Pitch from Mello is hit hard towards second base. Misjudging it is Steve Sylvia. He dives, he can't get it. A run comes in to score as Wild crosses the plate. A stop sign held up on Monahan. He will head back to third on an RBI single for Alex Reynolds. A deep breath from Aaron Mello on the pitcher's mound. Now is 0-1. It's hit hard to the left side. That is deep in the hole at shortstop. A tough play for Jose Martinez. He cannot get the throw to first base in time. Everyone safe. A run scores, and Milford opens up a 6-2 lead. Chance for Farrell to... Narrow down that strike zone on the 3-1 pitch. Instead, he drives this one out to left field. That sends Meehan back. The ball gets over his head and drifts deep out into left field. Here comes Reynolds to score. 
Another run right behind as Sasitsky crosses the plate. It's a two-run double for Michael Farrell, who continues to shine in these playoffs, and Milford is able to open up an 8-2 lead. So far, about 45 minutes into this game, we're not yet done with the top of the second as Sankioni now lines a pitch down the left field line. It's a fair ball rolling towards the corner. Two runs will score easily for post 59 as Sankioni stands at second with his second double of the inning. And Milford now up to double digits. They take a 10 to 2 lead on Somerset. And so that puts two men in scoring position now for post 59, looking to do some more damage before the second inning comes to a close. And Aiden Wild now drives the ball deep out to center field, racing back as Shea still going back. He dives, cannot make the catch. The ball drifts behind the goal posts. Two, uh, two run score for post 59. They will now wave Aiden Wild all the way around. He will score as he slides into home plate with a three run inside the park home run. And Milford now will open up a 13 to two lead. 10 runs, 7 hits, and a total of 15 batters in an inning that saw Milford turn a 3-2 lead into a 13-2 blowout. Post-59 would tack on a run thanks to an error in the third, and they would complete their scoring with an Alex Reynolds RBI single in the sixth. On the other side of the ball, the Milford bullpen would take care of business. Alex Gunfriday would allow one run on two hits in two and two-thirds innings. Jack Tempesta would allow just a single run in three innings of work and Kyle Nocero would finish things off with a scoreless seventh inning. In the end, Milford needed just seven innings to notch their 10th Mercy Rule win of 2017, this time in the state tournament. Milford eliminates Somerset from competition as they win by a final score of 15 to four. Milford's offense has been their greatest strength throughout the 2017 season. On day three of tournament action, they would face off against a Northampton team whose offense posted a combined total of 19 runs through their first two games of the state tournament. Whose offense would reign supreme in this elimination game? Milford would serve as the road team for the second straight day, and for the second straight day, they'd take advantage of leading off the game at the plate. After Joe Sanchione reached on an error and Sean Rebello poked a single to right, Milford's playoff RBI leader Aiden Wild would add to his tally with a gap shot double that would bring both runners around to give Milford a 2-0 lead. An Alex Reynolds sack fly would give Milford a third run before the top of the first came to a close. After the incoming Milford High senior Wild gave Milford the lead, the recent MHS graduate Alex Masick would look to hold the hot Northampton bats at bay. His outing would begin in impressive fashion with back-to-back -back called strikeouts to the first Northampton batters of the first. But post-28 would piece together a two-out rally with three straight singles, eventually plating a run to cut the Milford lead to two. After scoring another run in the second, post-28 would open the third with a double that turned into a three-base hit after a bit of a slow reaction in the Milford outfield. A walk would lead to a second base runner in the inning, and eventually both runners would score on a Pat Gregashevitz sacrifice fly and an RBI single from Derek Zawinski. Four unanswered runs for the Western Mass champs would give them a one-run lead heading into the fourth. But the post-59 bats were determined to turn things around as the top of the fourth began. A walk and a single would place two on with no outs for the eight and nine hitters in the Milford lineup. Here's the payoff pitch, and it's a line drive out to left center field. That's down for a hit. Sasitsky will come in to score. Here's Nocera racing around third base. He will score as Farrell is down to second base. And just like that, Milford is able to jump back on top. They now take a 5-4 to four lead. But when he's been in the lineup, he's been good. And now Tyler Almeida will send one back up the middle. That's through for a base hit. They will send Farrell to the plate. He will score. Back-to-back -back RBI base hits for Milford as they now open up a 6-4 lead. Michael Farrell was not done contributing to the offensive effort. In the top of the fifth, Farrell would single to drive in Alex Reynolds, allowing Milford to extend their lead to 7-4. Meanwhile, Northampton would have several opportunities to get back into the game. They would bring the tying run to the plate with two outs in the fifth, but Alex Masick was able to strike out Northampton's number nine hitter Andrew Serio to end the inning. With his pitch count over 100 in the sixth, Masick would face the Northampton cleanup hitter Will O'Connor with a man at third, and again Masick would work his magic getting O'Connor on a called strike three. In the end, Masick would grit his way through six innings, limiting Northampton to four runs while striking out nine batters. 
After Milford was gifted two insurance runs off of a throwing error in the top of the ninth, the tandem of Alex on Friday and Kyle Nocera would finish things off out of the pen, with Nocera striking out the last batter of the game with the bases loaded. It was another elimination game victory for Milford post-59. They defeat Northampton by a final of 9-4, sending the Western Mass champs on the long bus ride home for the offseason. After the game, Rob O'Keefe caught up with a few of the game's standout performers. So, um, some tough innings there, but you pulled out, kept it to four runs. What were you doing? What was working? What wasn't working? Uh, just staying ahead in the count. First pitch strikes helped, and the offense really bailed me out. After we were down that one run, we, we really picked up the intensity throughout the whole team, so that was big. You guys are the host team, so some people might say, you know, you got in here by luck, but what is the coach telling you guys to make you feel like you belong here? I think we all know, like, Everyone on the team knows that we belong here. We've proved it the past two games, and we're going to continue to do that. Did you know you were coming in, and uh, what was your mentality? Uh, I was just going to go and attack the hitters, mix it up a little bit. You had some uh, really dirty pitches there. Uh, what were you throwing that was working? Uh, the curve and the knuckleball were really working for me today. Uh, what is Coach saying to you about you know being here as the host team? Some people might say you don't belong here. Or it's luck. How, how does he make you realize that you guys belong here? Uh, he just tells us every day that we belong here. Every we, day. We had a great season this year. We went like 20 and 8, and really? we we deserve to be here, and we can play with anyone. Well, in the beginning, it was it's good to get a second chance, not winning the zone playoffs, and coming here to uh, drop our first game. We just had to uh, look ourselves in the mirror and just where do we want to be at the end of this tournament? We didn't want to go two and done in our own tourney, so we just picked it up. As Milford took the field on day four, they found themselves as one of just three teams still alive in tournament play. Post-59 would face the final unbeaten team in the tournament field on Wednesday in Braintree Post-86. A win for Milford would mean three teams would advance to championship day, with fellow Zone 4 team Shrewsbury also still active in the tournament after eliminating Ashland Post-77 in a mercy rule win just prior to Milford taking the field. Would we see two Zone 4 teams make it to Day 5? On the mound in Milford's third straight elimination game would be the Hopkinton high product Zach Sisitsky. Sisitsky's only other playoff start resulted in a 7-5 loss at Wachusett that ended Milford's run through the Zone playoffs. Sisitsky would start off strong on this night, notching a pair of Ks in a scoreless first inning of work. After two straight games as the road team, Milford would be the home team versus post-86. Despite waiting to take their at-bats until the bottom of the first inning, Milford would enjoy early offensive success for the third straight day. With two on and nobody out, Aiden Wild would single against Braintree starter Kyle Roach, bringing Sankione home to give Post 59 another first inning lead. After a fielder's choice play and a walk set up a bases loaded one out opportunity, it looked like Milford was primed to put up a big number on the scoreboard. But Kyle Nocera would send a bouncer to second base and Braintree would start a 4-6-3 double play, escaping the inning with just the one run allowed. In the top of the second, Braintree's Cole Flannery would send a pitch out to shallow right for a hit. Kyle Nocera was unable to field the bounce cleanly and that would allow Flannery to move up to second base. Next batter Steve Burns would send a routine pop-up on the shallow left field grass. Sankione would travel out with Rebello racing in, but a communication breakdown between the two would result in the ball landing for a gift hit, and it looked like Milford's sloppy defense was going to cost them yet again, but Sasitsky would pick the team up getting another strikeout before inducing a weak grounder to third, forcing Braintree to strand both runners. From there, Sasitsky would continue to keep the post-86 bats off balance. He'd scatter just four hits from the first inning to the fifth, helping to preserve Milford's slim one-to-nothing lead. Meanwhile, the duo of Kyle Roach and Tyler Morelli would keep Milford's offense quiet after that first inning. Finally, with a runner aboard and two outs in the bottom of the fifth, Tyler Monahan would provide a spark, sending a base hit out to right. Sean Rabella would fly around third, and despite electing not to slide, he would just beat the throw to the plate, giving Milford a two-to-nothing lead. Two batters later, Kyle Nocera would loop a pitch out to shallow center field. Monahan would slide safely into home as the throw would get away from the catcher, and that would allow Milford to up the lead to 3 to nothing. Sasitsky once again returned to the mound for the seventh, with a little more breathing room after that two-run rally. He would allow a hit to Jackson Duffy to lead off the inning. He'd retire the next batter on a ground out before Coach DeVito would pop out of the dugout to make the pitching change. 
Sasitsky would receive a thunderous applause from the Milford crowd after his six and a third superb innings of work. He would be replaced by Nate Irwin, who would immediately see a stellar defensive play turned in behind him. Does have that runner at second base here, and now the ball hit hard to the left side, a diving attempt for Monahan. He can't make the play, and now the throw to first base from Sankione backing up the play on the left side, and he gets the out at first. Monahan dove for it, could not make the play, but Sankione in the hole at shortstop, able to backhand it, and gets the throw to first base just in time to beat Adams. Irwin would end the inning with a K, and we'd head to the bottom of the seventh with the score unchanged. Milford would then be presented with their third bases loaded opportunity of the game with LeBlanc at the plate, looking for better results after an 0 for 3 start to his night. Blank in a battle with Steve Burns with the bases loaded. Here is the next pitch, and it's hit hard down the left field line, and it stays in fair territory, hugs that line. Monahan crosses the plate. Here comes Reynolds digging for home. He will score, and LeBlanc comes through here in the seventh, a two-run single to open up a 5 to nothing lead for post-59. With Irwin back out on the hill for the eighth, Braintree would place a couple of runners on base with one out, looking to finally break through on the scoreboard. 1-2 pitch, hit hard back up the middle, gets past Irwin out into center field. They'll wave the runner on towards the plate. Here comes the throw from Sean Rebello to the plate. It's there in time, and the runner is out. Sean Rebello sending that one all the way in the air towards the plate. And Reynolds able to slap the tag down as Casey came around from second base. Braintree would eventually score a run in the inning off a wild pitch, and then Milford would go scoreless in their half of the eighth, sending us on to the ninth with the score Milford 5 and Braintree 1. Tyler Monahan, after finishing off that eighth inning, would look to slam the door on post 86. He'd retire the first two batters on a strikeout and a groundout before getting Billy Sylvia to pop one up in foul territory. Aiden Wild was there to make the catch, and the last unbeaten team in the tournament would go down at the hands of post 59. Milford wins by a final of 5-1, sending three teams on to the final day of tournament play. Once again, we caught up with a few of the players after the game. Uh, I just tried to get ahead uh, of the guys early. Uh, luckily, I was fortunate enough my off-speed was going good early. I was able to get ahead um, with that early on. And, you know, my defense made plays behind me. You know, that was huge. So it was a good one. Uh, just bulldog mentality, you know, we come out here every night and grind, you know, we, ha we had a tough loss first game, um, but we come back every day, we're playing nine strong innings each game, um, and we just got to take it one pitch, one out at a time, and uh, try to get two tomorrow. I make sure everyone stays in the game mentally. This ba this game is, you know, one of the toughest games ever, and, you know, you're going to get another opportunity, so you've got to be able to lock it in at all times, so, you know, I just make sure everyone's mentally stable. <laughs> and I had two horrible bats and um, you know I saw Coach DeVito and he's like oh shorten up this time and just going up there I was like you know what I'm just gonna shorten up you know simple up and you know I just got a pitch to drive and that was it. I think we're ready to go honestly I mean I've only thrown 17 pitches so far this tournament I'm ready to go whenever he needs it but we got the ace on the hill tomorrow and I just can't wait to get after it. I'm so excited. Now initially the tournament was scheduled to conclude here on Wednesday of this week, but we had not one but two rainouts over the course of this five-day tournament action. So as a result, the final day of tournament play was pushed all the way to Friday, and because of that we're unable to bring you the conclusion of the tournament here on the Informer this week. But here's the scenario that unfolds for this Friday action. We'll see two games here on Fino Field to close out tournament play, and three teams remain in that tournament field. Milford Post 59 is one of them. They are joined by their fellow Zone 4 rival Shrewsbury post 397 and also Braintree post 86 still alive in tournament play all three teams with one loss heading into this day five of the tournament so here is how things will play out we'll see a game here at 430 between Milford and Shrewsbury those two Zone 4 rivals taking on one another with a trip to a one game winner take all state championship on the line the winner of that 430 game will take on Braintree for the state title and if Milford does move on to that state championship game you'll have an opportunity 
opportunity to watch it live as we will be live streaming coverage throughout the day here today. So if you are tuned into our Milford Informer on its premier viewing time at 7.30 on Friday, as soon as we wrap up here, head over to your computer or your mobile device and tune into our live stream, MilfordTV.net, watch our educational feed or tune in via the live stream app on your mobile device. And again, search for that Milford TV educational feed and you'll have an opportunity if Milford is in the state championship game to stream it live. And of course, you can listen live to all of the action from Milford Post 59 over with our friends on MyFM 101.3. So again, it has been a terrific week of baseball here from the tournament and happy to bring all of the coverage here for you. And of course, you can tune into all of the past games for Milford in the tournament over on our YouTube page on My Milford TV. So best of luck to Milford on this championship day. And of course, we'll update you on the status of this tournament. And should Milford play on to the regionals, we'll have coverage here on Milford TV as well. But that will wrap things up for this week's edition of the Milford Informer. We thank you so much for tuning in. And from all of us here at Milford TV, this is Tim Coet saying have a great week. So long, everybody.